The Consoling Thoughts of St. Francis de Sales Consoling Thoughts and Trials of an Interior Life Infirmities of Soul and Body, etc. Chapter 15 Mode of Combating Temptations Against Faith Your temptations against faith have returned. And though you do not reply to them by a single syllable, yet they press hard upon you. You do not reply to them, so far so good, but you think upon them. You are alarmed at them, you tremble for them. Only for this, they would not do you any hurt. You are too sensitive about temptations. You love your faith, and would not wish to have one thought contrary to it. Hence. Immediately, when a thought touches your mind, you are saddened and troubled. You are too jealous of the purity of faith. Everything appears to you capable of tainting it. We must act in this temptation as in that against chastity. Neither dispute with it much or little, but do as the children of Israel did with the bones of the paschal lamb, which they would not attempt to break, but cast whole into the fire. We must not answer or appear to understand what the enemy says. Let him brawl as long as he pleases at the door. We need only say, who's there? That is true, you will tell me, but he annoys me, and the noise he makes outside is so great that I cannot understand or arrange anything well within. Patience. We shall speak by signs. We shall prostrate ourselves before the Lord and remain at his feet. He will understand by this humble behavior that you are his, and that you desire his assistance while unable to ask it. But especially take care not to open the door within, either to see who is without or to chase the vagabond. At length he will cease his noise and leave you in peace. It will soon be time, you tell me. Courage, then. It will soon be time, provided that he does not enter. All is right. It is a very good sign if our enemy knocks and storms at the door, for it shows that he is not where he would wish to be. If it were open, he would no longer cry out. He would enter and take a seat. Remember this, so as not to fall into scrupulosity. I desire that we should be simple and settled in that faith, which the Holy Church teaches us, believing firmly everything that is written on this rock. For the evangelical law is written on it. Let us believe firmly and submit our understanding to that church which our Lord built upon the rock. For the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Our Lord prayed for St. Peter that his faith might not fail. This is the head of that church, which is the pillar and the ground of truth, as St. Paul says to his dear Timothy, Blessed is he who dashes his little ones against the rock, says the psalmist. When you are surprised sometimes with strange fancies concerning the things of faith, with little imaginations and thoughts of infidelity, what will you do? If you allow them to enter into your mind, they will trouble you and take away your peace. Break and shatter those thoughts and imaginations to pieces against the rock of the church, and say to your understanding, Ah, my understanding, God has not commanded thee to feed thyself. It is for Peter and his successors to feed thee. Blessed then is he who breaks his little ones against this rock. I shall now give you another remedy. Temptations against faith go directly to the understanding to lead it to disputations, to reveries, to dreams. Do you know how you should act while the enemy amuses himself about the means of scaling your intellect? Start out presently by the door of your will and give him a good shot. That is to say, as soon as the temptation against faith makes its appearance, attack it. But how to do this? And how to do that? And what if this happens? And what if that happens? Instead of entering into any discourse or discussion with the enemy, let your effective force with all its strength rush upon him. 
and at the same time joining the exterior to the interior voice, cry out, Ah, wretched traitor, you forsook the church of the angels, and would you wish me to forsake that of the saints? Disloyal, unfaithful, and perfidious, you presented the first woman with the apple of perdition, and would you wish me to taste it too? Be gone, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. No, I will not argue or contend with you. Eve, wishing to do so, was seduced. Eve, yielding, was lost. Live Jesus, in whom I believe. Live the church, to which I adhere. We must also say to Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit such other things as they will suggest, and to the church, O Mother of the children of God, never shall I be separated from thee. I wish to live and die within thy pale. I do not know whether I have made myself well understood. I mean to say that we should retaliate with affections, and not with reasons, with virtues, and not with considerations. It is true that during the time of temptation, the poor will is as dry as a stick. But so much the better. Its blows will be more terrible on the enemy, who, when he sees that instead of retarding your progress, he only gives you occasion to exercise a thousand virtuous affections, and particularly to make protestations of faith, will very soon leave you altogether. To conclude, these temptations, like others, are but afflictions, and we must rely upon the assurance of Holy Scripture, Blessed is he who endures temptation, for having been proved, he shall receive the crown of life. I must inform you that I have seen few persons advanced in holiness without this trial, and therefore we must have patience. Our God will send the calm after the storm. Here ends the reading, and thanks be to God.